So you have perfectly configured Laravel to use pusher in the backend. That means we have the pusher dependency using composer. Of course, we configure the credentials, the secret. We enable the provider for the broadcasting. But remember, the real time notifications needs to work in the backend to send the notifications. Let's say to the real time service, but then the elements, the clients that are connected to the web service, the real time service need to know how to do that, need to know what to do once you receive the message. And that is usually done using JavaScript, for example, when we are in the browsers. And for that, we need to establish connections with the web socket that pusher or the service that you have for the real time is exposing. So that means that we need to play a little with our dependencies for the front end, as we did for our backend using Composer. We need to add the dependencies for Pusher and especially for Laravel Echo. Yes, we are going to introduce Laravel Echo now. Laravel Echo is the library in the front end that is going to interact with Pusher to send and basically receive elements from the real time messages, from the real time events. So Laravel Echo is the bridge, the communication point between your backend and your frontend using that WebSockets and using Pusher, of course. So let's just start adding our dependencies before to enable the Laravel Echo components. Remember, Laravel Echo components are located in resources, JS, bootstrap.js, and there you have commented for now the components for this. So let's to add the dependencies. And for that, once again, we need to open the command prompt in the location of our project. And there, using npm, we are going to require that components. So let's to use npm install. And we are going to require that as a development dependency using dash dash save dash dev. And we need two of them. Remember, the pusher library for JavaScript and the Laravel Echo library. So let's just start with Laravel Echo and then with pusher-js. Let's to press enter. And then of course, NPM is going to install that. Once again, we need to compile that. But before to compile, we need to enable Laravel Echo. And how can we enable that? Well, we just need to uncomment those lines. You can see that here we are importing echo from the definition of Laravel echo, but additionally, we are using pusher from the pusher.js. Both of them are the required dependencies that we just installed. So everything is good here. Then we have the definition of Laravel echo to say, hey, I'm going to use pusher and I'm going to use this key and I'm going to use this cluster. And for security and because pusher allows that, we are going to encrypt the connections. So let's to stop a little here because you can see that we are using something called mix pusher app key and mix pusher app cluster. And there is a very interesting symmetry between these elements and the elements that we have in the .m file. Yes, those are basically the same. You have mix pusher app key and mix pusher app cluster in your environment file. So you might be wondering how it is possible how a variable that we have in our environment file in the backend is perfectly available in the frontend. Well, that is some magic, let's say, from Laravel Mix. That is a very important element, a very important tool. You can see that we can access through the process element and in the environment part. Then we have this and this. And the interesting part is that you are not repeating the values you are just referencing that from the original one. So the mix pusher up key is exactly equals to the pusher up key and the same for the pusher up cluster. Those are references. In fact, everything that starts with mix underscore is going to be automatically available in the process that amp component. So you can take advantage of that if you need. And that means that at this point you have available in your JavaScript, your public key for pusher and your cluster because those are required and very important to establish the connection with the WebSocket on pusher from the JavaScript. It means from the front end. So once it is uncommented and we have 
our libraries, we need to go once again to the command prompt, remember in the location of the project and run npm run dap to compile our new assets with the changes. So yes, at this point, you have perfectly functional your Laravel application with Pusher and your Laravel mix using Laravel Echo to interact with Pusher as well from the frontend. So your backend and your frontend are perfectly capable at this point to interact with Pusher and to establish WebSockets connection, which are very required to receive messages on real time. So yes, we are going to do that in the following sections and in the following classes using this to start creating our first real-time application and of course the other applications that we are going to learn and understand during this course.